hours? Of course they did. Now, this video is called Justice for 9-11 because we want to see the guilty parties arrested and punished. Silverstein knows who they are. He tried to collect seven billion dollars from his insurance company for the attacks. He's in league with the killers. And based on this evidence, he should be arrested and prosecuted. And who else should be punished for this outrageous crime? Richard Myers should be very high on our list. Fifty minutes after the first plane hit, fifty minutes after everyone in the country knew that we were under attack, with all of the defenses in place around the Pentagon, this guy couldn't get one single shot fired in our defense. But Myers is just a soldier. He follows orders, and his orders come from George W. Bush. Bush liked the job Myers did on September 11th. He liked it so well that he promoted Myers the following week. For that alone, he should be arrested and prosecuted. But let's take a closer look at the president. As many people know, on the morning of September 11th, Bush arrived at a school in Florida. However, you may not know that Bush has said... Well, first of all, when we walked in the classroom, uh, I had seen this uh, plane fly into the first building. There was a TV set on. And, and uh... What? What did he just say? Well, first of all, when we walked in the classroom, uh, I had seen this uh, plane fly into the first building. There was a TV set on. And, and uh... No TV channel showed the first plane flying into the building. If Bush saw the first plane crash that morning, it was on a closed circuit from a secret government source. That by itself, having cameras in place for a live shot of the first plane hitting the Twin Towers, suggests that Bush and his people knew in advance that the attacks were coming. But we're just getting started. Well, first of all, when we walked in the classroom, uh, I had seen this uh, plane fly into the first building. There was a TV set on. And, and, uh, you know, I thought it was pilot error. Bush and everyone else in the world knew that the World Trade Center was a terrorist target. It had been bombed before in 1993. FEMA showed the towers as a target on the cover of their 1997 study on terrorism. The Justice Department showed the towers as a target on the cover of their manual distributed to local police in the year 2000. For two years, the Pentagon had been running drills in which the towers and the Pentagon were targets of hijacked planes. And, on August 6th, 36 days before the September 11th attacks, Bush was given a briefing from a CIA memo on the threat of terrorist attacks. I believe the title was, Bin Laden Determined to Attack Inside the United States. And Bush wants us to believe that with all that background, he and his advisors thought that this was pilot error and thought that the best way he could carry out his oath to defend the citizens of the United States was to sit and listen to a story about a pet goat. After the second plane struck, Bush's chief of staff walked in and told him that the country was under attack. And Bush continued to sit there as his people begged for rescue. If you believe his story, this shows the grossest criminal negligence for which he and his entire staff should be arrested and prosecuted. Secretary Rice also pleaded innocent by reason of stupidity. And um, I said no one could have imagined them taking a plane, slamming it into the, the Pentagon, into the, I'm paraphrasing now, into the World Trade Center, uh, using planes as a missile. But she and President Bush are clearly lying. Let's present this one point again. As late as June 2001, three months before the attacks, the Pentagon conducted drills in which they pretended that hijacked airliners were being crashed into the World Trade Center and the Pentagon. They knew. And the fact that they are trying to pass off such weak and obvious lies shows that they are part of a criminal conspiracy. They want us to think that they were asleep, mentally. But you see, it doesn't matter if they were asleep. I mean, suppose the attacks had been at 3 a.m., when Bush and Rice actually were asleep. What then? Is that all terrorists have to do is wait for these guys to go to sleep? You see? The U.S. has the world's biggest, most advanced, and most expensive defense systems. There are procedures that are followed, whether our leaders are asleep or awake, 
24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year, there are high-speed jet fighters fired up and sitting on the runway waiting for an attack, waiting for a plane to diverge from its flight plan and start heading where it doesn't belong. This happens about a hundred times a year that these planes have to take off and catch somebody who's wandered into the wrong place. These standard procedures should have stopped the attacks on the World Trade Center and the planes at Andrews Air Force Base would have taken eight seconds to reach the Pentagon. Again, they didn't need orders from the President or the National Security Advisor to do it. The destruction in New York and at the Pentagon did not occur because someone failed to order jets to intercept and shoot down the hijackers. Someone gave an order not to shoot, or else, no doubt, there would have been shots fired. The question is, who gave the order? And just as Silverstein accidentally told PBS that they had explosives in place in Building 7. Uh, and they made that decision to pull, and then we watched the building collapse. Norman Mineta, the Secretary of Transportation, accidentally told the 9-11 Commission who gave the order not to attempt to intercept or shoot down the planes. Mineta testified that at 9.28 he was in a bunker under the White House with Vice President Cheney. There was a young man who would come in and say to the Vice President, the, the plane is 50 miles out, the plane is 30 miles out, and when it got down to the plane is 10 miles out, uh, the young man also said to the Vice President, do the orders still stand? And uh, the Vice President turned and whipped his neck around and said, of course the orders still stand. Have you heard anything to the contrary? Cheney said, the order still stands, and a few moments later a plane smashed into the Pentagon. A giant, slow-moving 757 that could not even have penetrated Pentagon airspace on September 10th, on September 11th, not only penetrated Pentagon airspace, but crashed into the Pentagon. So, what was Cheney talking about when he said, the order still stands? What order still stands? Obviously, with all the vast defenses in place to protect the Pentagon, if it was an order to shoot, the plane would have been shot down, no? Isn't that obvious? If it were an order to shoot, the people who failed to fire even one shot would have incurred the wrath of Dick Cheney, would have been court-martialed instead of promoted, no? If it were an order to shoot, the young man would not have run to Cheney to find out if the order still stood. He would have been busy carrying out the order to shoot, obviously. So it's also obvious that Cheney had ordered the defenses not to shoot, but to stand down. He had ordered no shots to be fired. No wonder the young officer couldn't believe it. Can you believe it? Because Mineta's sworn testimony provides the clearest possible evidence for a criminal indictment to be brought against Cheney and this indictment must be brought against him and the rest of these criminals before they kill again. If we don't stop them, I'm afraid, we will deserve what we get. These criminals have already been shown to have used anthrax, biological weapons from military stockpiles, against American citizens, including U.S. Senators. What this article says is that the anthrax which killed secretaries in Senator Daschle's offices matches exactly the DNA of the anthrax manufactured by the U.S. military. Both samples had to have come from the exact same cow. They've already been shown to be studying methods for delivering these weapons massively against the American people. Please, for your own sake, for the sake of your children and grandchildren, sign this petition. Take it and circulate it and return it to us. It may already be too late to stop them, but it's way too early to quit trying.